Hello Internet. Today we have this EVGA 2080 Ti that seems to have been opened before as this fake warranty label suggests. Not sure why it's in this location. If you know, let me know in the comment section. Meanwhile, I'll be removing 300 screws from the backplate of this device, under which we find a ton of thermal pads. That's nice. Okay, let's do the most basic diagnostics here by measuring resistances in the key areas, such as 12 volt with kilo ohms, 3.3, we have very many kilo ohms, 13 ohms on PEX, 1.8 volt with 2.2K, this one is 12 volt, 5 volt with 13K, USB-C with 80 plus kilo ohms, and these three are all 12 volts. Memory with 16 ohms, this is Samsung, so this is normal. And while we're here, let's check the first uh, two data output lines in diode mode. I want to see a similar reading on both, and that's exactly what we have. On the back side of the board, the data input is checked after the capacitors. Value there is different, but it matches one to another more or less. Same thing with clock reference plus and minus, measured at the slot, and PEX reset pin with the leads reversed. Okay, let's power it on and see if we get all the necessary voltages in order for this card to operate. Good, now let's plug the card in and run a memory test. Maybe we find a reason why this card is on my table. Nope, memory test passed. Okay then, let's boot into Windows and see what happens. And as soon as the drivers install, I'm greeted with a black screen of death. Since everything seems to work fine, except for the core itself, I have no other ideas as to what's wrong other than the bad connection somewhere under the GPU. So, let's remove the GPU, get it reballed and try again.
I don't have a large ultrasonic cleaner, so this is how I clear out flux under the GPU. While the board is hot, I flood it with alcohol and continuously brush and run alcohol down, collecting it with some paper towel. Once paper towel stops getting yellowish tone, I know it's clean. Now that the card is clean and dry, we have to take some critical measurements, such as PEX, 1.8 volt and memory rail. These readings are on the low side because the board is still a little warm, so there's nothing unusual about that. And now let's boot the card and go straight into Windows. And as you can see, drivers are loaded already and we don't have black screen anymore which means we can now assemble the card, and that's where we ran into a small problem. I accidentally bent this one pin. No problem there, I'll get those pins fixed in no time. So I can go back to my favorite process of this repair, is to get those 300 screws back on the board. yippity do. Now I'm gonna push the button of joy, image is frozen and we are inside windows i ran form mark for a few seconds to see if the temperatures are okay and i didn't like it so i decided to shut down the pc open up the card again and see what's going on and look what i found i found that the chip does not want to make an even contact with the heatsink for some reason and that reason is incorrect thickness of pads You can see how bulged the area is where the memory and VRM is located. That's a common mistake. I get a feeling that the customer wouldn't want to pay extra for replacing so many pads. So I did what every one of you would do. Replace this thicker pad with a thinner pad. And now that that's done, I ran it for a couple of minutes. Temperature between the GPU and the hotspot equalized within a reasonable range. I am not particularly happy with the result, but it's not too bad, considering the cost and the effect. Plus, the customer was okay with that. As usual, I ran Superposition Benchmark, which gave me a good 2080 Ti score. Haven't ran without issues, and at this point I'm done. If you guys are interested in supplies and equipment I use, please check out the links in the description, and if you have a card for repair, Feel free to contact me by following the link in the same place. And this is it for this card, I hope you enjoyed this repair and I'll see you later, goodbye.